The sampling approach I'm going to demonstrate is the electron octatrack version of picking a record and randomly dropping the needle. But instead of a turntable, we'll be using a static machine, and the start parameter replaces the stylus. Recently, I experimented with live processing and resampling mixed and mastered commercial recordings by playing the audio into the octatrack inputs. I used this approach to produce my recent track, Unidentified. I also experimented with storing complete recordings on the octatrack and playing them back using static machines, which offers more control, although perhaps somewhat less serendipity. Before getting to work, I'm going to alter this project so that it has 24-bit settings and dynamic recorders. This process of atomization and recontextualization can also be used to recycle your own finished tracks, with the added benefit of no longer needing to obfuscate the origins of borrowed audio. I've prepared 44.1 kHz 24-bit masters of some of my tracks that might be interesting to sample from. That one's a little bit too high energy for me at the moment. A little better, but still not feeling it. Not feeling that one either. Maybe one of these modular recordings. Yeah, let's go with this one. 57 question is a very atmospheric and languid jam. Now to get a trig down and start the sequencer. Just realized I should turn off time stretch. I don't want any degradation of the audio, and I doubt the Octatrack correctly guessed the tempo anyway. I want some more trigs down, and I'm going to start adjusting the amplitude envelope. Regardless of the length of your sample, the start parameter slices it into equally spaced chunks. So let's scan through the start positions and see what options we have currently available. This recording has an atmospheric intro section that I think I'd like to focus on for this first sound. So I'm going to go into the static slot list and edit this particular sample slot. The start parameter only selects values in between the start and end points that you've defined in the audio editor. Reached the beginning there. This looks like it's about the end of the intro section. Now the sample playback is only starting from inside the intro section. Caught a little bit of the percussion at the end of the intro section, but that's not a problem. Might even be useful later. Now I have more of a framework to build from. Let's try modulating the start parameter of the static machine using an LFO. Depending upon the speed of the modulation, the size of your audio files, the number of static machines in your project, and the data transfer rate of your compact flashcard, start position modulation of static machines is not always a possibility. Even when it is possible, it's often not as clean or precise as doing the same thing with a flex machine. For this particular use case, I'm willing to accept these limitations, but it's very important to understand there can often be dramatic differences in performance between flex and static machines when modulating start position. The second LFO I'm going to use to dynamically flip the direction of playback. By setting the depth to maximum, it will flip between the two extremes of the rate parameter. I definitely want to change this to hold behavior. Still a bit boring, but the modulation is giving us some variety now. Now to slice away a bit more of the original with the filter. Now to try some repitching, just to see how it sounds. I'm preferring this at the original pitch for the moment. Maybe I can spice up the start position modulation a little bit.
Definitely need some more trigs. That's getting a bit better. Maybe time to up the tempo. I know that the original recording is at 57 beats per minute, but here I'm only using my ears to find what I like. Part of the reason I tend to purposefully employ these kinds of imperfect methods is that they often result in much more organic rhythms and phrasing, reducing or eliminating the necessity of swing and microtiming. Filtering the signal not only adds interest and movement, it helps reduce the clicking artifacts caused by the start position modulation. Let's engage this delay. I'm looking for something fairly textural and spacious. Feel like I need to open up the low pass a bit. Now to route the third LFO. I was thinking to put this on the low pass filter cutoff, but I want more variation in the amplitude envelope. Properly adjusting the amplitude envelope release modulation is especially tricky when working with an entire mix as the sample source. A short release window may only let through a single note or a brief bit of ambience, whereas a longer release may expose distinctive melodic ornaments or even entire phrases. Now back to the filter. That feels better. Now to revisit the delay. Not feeling the delay. Let's try out a dark reverb. Change that to send and set some pre-delay. I want things pretty wet. Going for a medium sized room here and I'm going to shave off some of the top end but not too much. Now back to the filter, going to try engaging the high pass. I want to cut out some of the lowest frequencies, but I also want to see if there's anything interesting in the low mids that I can emphasize. Now it's time for some more effects with the neighbor machine. Not quite sure what I want to do here. Maybe instead of a filter, I'll put an equalizer here. I'll leave both bands set to parametric. Now I'm going to modulate that EQ frequency. I'm looking for stepwise filter motion, so I'll change that to hold behavior. Now I need to get some trigs down on this neighbor machine track. Now it's time to set per track scale mode. And I'll bump up that master length to 128. Now to change the number of steps on this neighbor machine track. Now there's a cross rhythmic relationship between the two tracks, resulting in a greater amount of variation, even though I've reduced the total number of steps I'm using. Now to put that second EQ band to work. Now to route an LFO to modulate the frequency of that second EQ band. Now to adjust the relationship between the two LFOs. When you have two different LFOs on related parameters or the same parameter, it can be interesting to combine a free running LFO with an LFO set to hold. Not much success with that here though, so I'll change this one to hold as well. Now I'm adding some triggers and changing the scale multiplier to try out faster stepwise motion of the EQ frequencies. Kind of interesting, but I don't really like it very much. Let's just go to the scale multiplier and try slowing it way down. That's definitely less annoying. Now for some more processing. I'm thinking maybe a compressor? Turning up the RMS for a smoother response. Mostly want to just smush this sound a bit and add some beef.
Time to revisit the reverb that's before this compressor. I'll try filtering out some lows for more clarity. Try messing with the reverb time a bit. Maybe I'll make this room a bit smaller and turn up the send. That's come along decently well. Now it's time to mix things up a bit with some resampling. I'm going to make this track a flex machine with time stretch off. Now I need to go into the record setup menu. I'll disable the audio inputs as sources and change the recording length. And I'll set the source 3 sampling source to be the cue. Now I'm going to put a single record trick down. I don't want to put it at the beginning of the pattern though. And I wanted a recording length less than 16 steps. Now to take a look at the record buffer. Oops, I need to cue track 2. Now we're getting some audio. Need to get some tricks down on the resample playback track. And I need to set that flex machine to its record buffer. I'm going to offset the start position a bit. I plan to add some modulation to this. Now for an LFO. Now to add some more triggers. I'm going to adjust the amplitude envelope to get short clips of sound. Maybe I could put these clicks to work by passing them through a resonant filter. That's already much more enjoyable. Might as well put a comb filter on this too. Now that I have the comb filter resonating, I'm going to try to see what pitches are interesting. When I start to find some pitches that I like, I'll P-lock them to some of the tricks. I'm listening for both pitches that are in key, as well as the interesting out of key pitches. By carefully accounting for the overall harmonic context, judicious use of pitches that initially seem out of key can often lead to fascinating reharmonizations. Sometimes they just sound bad though. Now to readjust the filter. Even though I'm using only tiny pieces of sound to excite the comb filter, repitching the source sample can still have some interesting effects, although they tend to be subtle. Also important to note how repitching the sample can change its relationship to the filter cutoff frequencies. For a bit more variety, I'm going to change this track to 15 steps. This also changes the relationship of the record trig to the source audio. I don't quite remember how many steps I had on that first track, just wanted to make sure it was something other than 15. Now for some extra effects on that resampling channel. Going to put a compressor on here. I want more control over the transients and more access to gain. Setting this up with a slightly slower attack and a faster release for a bit of pumping. Let's try some delay on these metallic comb filter plucks. Now to revisit the source sound for a bit of tweaks here and there. 
Let's try making that reverb a bit more dramatic. Now I want to try getting something percussive and rhythmic. I'm going to take the same source sample I've been using and put it in another sample slot so that it has different start and end points from the first sample slot. A bit hard to hear what I'm doing. That's a percussive section of the sample. Now for some more tricks. Not quite the start point I was looking for. Chunky, noisy hit might be workable. Let's see what the filter does to it. Still not getting much satisfaction. Let's try some more start points. I just realized that I forgot to turn time stretch off for this track. Sometimes it doesn't make much of a difference, but in certain situations it can really impact the sound quality. I really need to mute that comb filter track. Lots of cool little chunks but not really what I'm looking for. Looks like I need to adjust the start and end point of the sample slot. I'm just going to move them around while the pattern plays and listen for a spot that I like. Time to mess with the filter and the amplitude envelope a bit, make this more percussive. Okay, I'm going to bring back the comb filter sound. Time to add some tricks. Maybe I'll try doing some sort of backbeat. Let's find an interesting start point for our snare. I already have a trigger on the fourth beat, so I'll syncopate this second backbeat. Now to add some filter P-locks to further differentiate these hits. Time to put a compressor in the second effect slot. I reflexively turned up the RMS value, but turned it back to zero when I realized that I wanted an aggressive compression effect. I'm using a fairly fast attack time in order to thicken up the drums quite a bit. Now to unmute the original sound. If I need to make some adjustments here and there, this is pretty messy at the moment. Let's adjust the percussion filter a bit. Since I P-locked the filter values for the backbeat hits, this will only affect the more bassy percussive hits. Really need some more gain out of the compressor also. I suppose I'd like to make this punchy and pumpy. Time to raise the attack time considerably and lower the release time. Now for some more effects on the comb filter resampling channel. 
you already have a delay on this sound, why not a reverb? I'm going to dial this one in to be pretty epic. And I'll trim it back a bit afterwards, if it's a bit too much. Need to darken it a bit with the filter and shelving frequency. back to the drum track, it feels a bit obscured. I'm getting the extra definition I was looking for from the filter envelope, with a little bit of extra resonance and depth. I'll try adding some hair and fuzz by using the filter distortion. another sound, maybe more of a background sound. I'll save some time by copying the first track and pasting it into the fourth track. The first thing I'll change is the number of steps and the scale speed of the track. Let's mute the other sounds so we can focus on this one. Time to try some heavy filtering. First, I'll try a compressor in order to bring these sounds forward. I want this track to be more atmospheric and less percussive, so I'm going to turn up the amplitude envelope attack time. I'll try repitching this and see how it sounds when it's mixed with the original. Yeah, that's not really working for me. I'm thinking that now it's time to mess with the start position and the start position modulation. No plan here. I'm just looking for something that's interesting and different from the original track. That's kind of nice. This compressor isn't really doing much for me. I think I could get more mileage out of a different effect. I'll try a reverb since I want this to be atmospheric and textural. I lost a lot of signal level by swapping out the compressor. I'll add some back using the volume parameter. Normally, I would use the sample attribute gain but this sample slot is being referenced by two different static machines right now. Okay, that's probably loud enough. There we go. Now I feel like I've actually accomplished something. Sending this new sound to the queue as well. I'll try turning up the release on the resampling channel. I'm pretty sure I'm clipping the main outs of the Octatrack at this point. So I'm going to set up a resampling buffer in order to take a look at that. Oops, need to set that resampling source. Yep, that's clipping. No surprise there, I guess. I'll take another look now that I've turned down the main output. Appears we're safe from clipping for now. I'm going to adjust some track levels anyway. Trying to mess a bit with the effects on the textural sound. more distinct from the other sounds now. Since I copied this track, all of the LFOs are already routed. I think I'll leave those first two alone. Let's see what the third one is doing. I think I'll get more mileage out of this LFO, sending it to the filter rather than the amplitude envelope. I 
really need to adjust that filter now that there's some modulation on it. Might as well try some filter distortion. That's adding a little bit of something without being obnoxious. Time to revisit the drum track. Let's add a bit more gain and saturation. Now that I've added some gain and saturation to the compressor, time to bring the track level down a little. I'll try adding some interest and variety to the drum track with the LFOs. I'm going to set this LFO up as a modulation for the filter. I'm going to leave the default depth at zero though, because I'm going to P-lock the depth on the steps that I want to be affected by the LFO. Oops, I think it was the first LFO, not the third one. I'm going to modulate the filter on the backbeat triggers. I'll set them up with different depths and speeds. For these triggers, the filter P-locks dictate the center point of the filter cutoff frequency modulation. I'll add some filter envelope P-locks in order to further differentiate these hits. Go back and readjust the LFOs. A very simple and basic approach for percussion, but it has some nice movement to it. <laughs> 